We're online today. First of all, I want to say we are really glad that you can join us online. We were working on the live stream, and uh, Garen it was, and Leah were up there getting it worked out. So I guess we are good to go. So you can see us, and we can see you. Or we can't see you, but you can see us. Uh, anyway, if you are online with us this morning, uh, remember you can push the request prayer button at any time during the service, and you'll be brought into a, a private chat room. You can be prayed for uh, whatever is on your heart today. And remember to write your name also in the chat window so that we can identify each other and say hello. And uh, welcome to worship this morning to each one of us. We'll have some time later to, to be prayed for at the end of the service if you're here for the first time. And just know that we, uh, we feel the presence of God each time we come into worship. And we expect God to meet us here. We believe that each one of us has been invited to this place to be part of this, this moment. And that God's inviting us to stop and to take a very deep breath right now. And to invite his presence with us and to remember that the, the Spirit is here to bring healing and to, to bring change and to bring new power into each of our lives. I want to invite... Actually, Leah is up there uh, helping me out this morning, so I'm not going to invite Leah today. So I'm going to <laughs> ask you to join me in the call to worship from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And together you have set your glory above the heavens, and from the lips of children and infants your praises can be heard. With the awe and wonder of children, we come to you today. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Let's pray together. We're here again this morning to be reminded of your steadfast love and to learn to do your will. We're here to remember that we are not alone, that you accompany us, and that we are surrounded by the family of God. Living God, your name is majestic. Your work is perfect and all your ways are just. We come to you this morning as little children in awe and wonder and with gratitude for every good and beautiful thing we have received from your hand. Strengthen us that we may comfort and strengthen others and fill us again with your joy and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hey, this morning we, we have a, a special opportunity, a special blessing this morning. Taylor and Alexa, who are founding members of Well Collective, are with us today. I just want to welcome them this morning. It's great to have you today as people are coming into the service. Let's, uh, let's give them a warm welcome. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to be with you all. Um, hey, if you're able, let's stand as we worship. And uh, I wanted to highlight uh, something the prophet Isaiah said um, as, we, as we start worshiping together in this first song. Um, Isaiah writes, This is what the Lord your Creator says. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Uh, we're going to sing a song together that, uh, from what I understand, is new for this community. Um, but it's a song that invites us into the resurrection. Um, that invites us into the redemption of Christ. Uh, so let's sing together.
Your love is, your love is, your love is. 
Pharisees asked Jesus where this kingdom was, when they would know the kingdom of God is here. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God is already in your midst.
experience uh, as we worship in all different ways this morning. Thank you for being here with us, Lord. We love you and pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why don't you turn to someone around you, say hi, shake a hand before you sit down. It's not on? It's on. Thank you. Good morning, St. John's. Some of you know my name is Nancy Ashley, and I'm the Director of Children and Family Ministries here. And it is my pleasure to uh, make a few announcements for you this morning. First off, um, the theme for Sunday School this month is Road Rules. Respect, ride with respect, and we are learning to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. And today, we're going to learn a really new concept about loving your enemy. Um, also, some other announcements regarding Sunday School is that I'm hoping to expand our small pool of Sunday School teachers and helpers. And we still have our one-room Sunday School and then that meet in the Westminster Room, and then our preschool kids meet in the Blue Room uh, over there across the hall. And I would like to open up the nursery as an option for visitors that come with babies under the age of two. So if anybody's interested in helping with Sunday school on Sunday morning, let me know, and I'd be happy to talk to you a little bit more about it and see what you would desire, how you would desire to help, et cetera. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is story time with Miss Nancy. And that happens every Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. Um, it's a Zoom event, and it's a private link. You have to talk to me to get it. Um, and we just read stories. It's really fun. And for now, all the stories I read are stories that I read to my kids for years and years and years and years. So if you would like to join us, you can even come along if you're an adult as well. Um, let me know, and we'll be doing story time every Thursday at 7 o'clock. Also, um, there's still the Sprouted newsletter that goes out every uh, week. And for a little techie fun, it is a private newsletter, so it's not open to anybody just to join us, just for uh, people who have communicated with me. If you take out your smartphone and turn on the camera, you can, you can point it at that QR code, and you'll be able to send me an email requesting a subscription. Anyway, there's lots of there's information in there about what's happening in Sunday school, what's happening um, in upcoming events, and so check it out. It's really easy to read. There's lots of pictures. And then, of course, we have our calendar for the for, um, winter and spring of 2023. It has the very basics of what we're doing each month. And um, I may be adding something to it, but generally this is what we're doing for the next few months. So take a peek at that if you like. And then finally, um, our parent preschool picnic play date 
fund that we had on the first Saturday of every month is morphing into Family Treehouse because we're opening it up to uh, families of all ages, not just preschoolers. And we'll be syncing up with our soup and salad potluck on the first Sunday of the month and specifically starting in March um, so that we can offer activities to families outside as well as the fellowship of sharing a meal together. And with that, I would like the kids to join me in Sunday school. Good morning. Let us continue in a, this beautiful morning. And the praises were so good, weren't they? Feeling the presence of the Lord among us. Uh, if you are able, do you mind standing up and join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. We thank you, Lord, that without you, we wouldn't be here. It's because you sent your son Jesus to die for us that we are able to come to this place. And Father, we start recognizing that we sin. We pray, Lord, that you will show us, each one of us, Lord, uh, where there are things still yet that we haven't turned around from, things that we need to stop doing, Lord, that you will speak to each one of us, Lord. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that no matter what we do, you're always going to forgive us because of your son Jesus' sacrifice. And Lord, um, with this large amount of people and people watching from home, I can only imagine, Lord, that some of us uh, bring heavy hearts for different reasons. And Father, I just want to bring to you whatever I have, me personally and I, and everybody else that is here, Lord. We bring pain, Lord. It could be pain physically. It could be pain, Father, for relationships with our loved ones. It could be pain, Father, from um, the need that we have, Lord, of provision. Whatever it is, Lord, we bring it to you today, knowing, Lord, that you are answering our prayers, Lord, as we speak. And, Lord, um, it says in Matthew, Lord, um, 5, 3 through 10, Lord, blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Father, I pray that we will realize that you are God and we are not. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Lord, um, we are in a world, Lord, that is broken and there is so much mourning, Father. And Lord, we pray that today that the comforter, you, Lord, will bring us comfort. Father, we pray for those that are mourning because of all the things that are going on around. Father, give them the comfort that they need. Lord, we pray for all of those that have lost loved ones. We have people here in our congregation, Lord, that have lost loved ones. Father, we pray especially for those places that we know of, Lord, uh, in Turkey and Syria. Uh, we lift up to you, Father, um, people in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, there are places around the world, Lord, where there has been people that have been murdered recently, Lord, uh, including our country. Father, you are our comforter, Lord. I just pray that you, these people will turn out to you and find the comfort they are looking desperately for. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Lord, we thank you, Father, uh, that you have given us so much. I pray, Lord, that uh, starting with those of your house, Lord, your children, that we will remember, Lord, if we have the power, Lord, to, to retaliate, you know, uh, the power of vengeance, Father. I just pray, Lord, that we will give that up. That w whatever um, we have the right to, to return, Lord, something that has been done to us, we pray, Father, that we will refrain from it. That we will be like you, Jesus, when you had the power to do everything for your enemies. You didn't do it, and you went to the cross. Lord, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Father, we hunger to see everything made right. We hunger, Father, to see those people that are doing horrible things to others. We, mm. we hunger, Lord, to see them to stop that. And sometimes we, we even desire, Lord, that they'll be punished. But, Father, we have the rest in you, that you will fill that desire for righteousness. And even to them, you're going to show, Father, what is next. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Father, we are before you because we have been received of mercy. Mercy, Lord, something that we don't deserve. So, Father, I pray that we, 
your children will remember, Lord, to be merciful to those that have the wrong to us. To be merciful, Father, for those that are in need. To be merciful, Father, for those that are weak. Father, that we will do as you have done unto us, Lord. For blessed are the poor in heart, the pure in heart, for they will see God. Father, I just pray that we will have a heart for you, holy for you, Lord. I pray that we won't let anything else dwell in our hearts that doesn't belong there. Lord, any, any malice, uh, any hate, Lord. Uh, I just pray, Father, that you will help us to be pure as you, Lord, are pure. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Lord, Lord let us start in our own homes. Let us seek uh, the peace, Lord, starting with us. Let us, Father, be the first one, Lord, to, to, to ask for forgiveness, Lord. And, Father, uh, to escalate to, to governments, that there will be peace, Lord. Uh, but it will start with the people of God, Lord. Help us, Father, to be seeking that peace and to be an example to others, Lord, of what that peace, that passes all understanding is, Lord. And um, be peaceful to one another, that all these fights, Lord, that we have will cease, Father. Um, because we have the answer, Lord, that the world is seeking. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Father, um, people are being persecuted for different reasons, and many of them just for doing what is right. Um, people that are pushed, Lord, at work to try to, to steal and to deceive, Lord, and, and they don't want to do it. They, they get to be persecuted. But, Father, at the same time, too, Lord, there are the people that are being persecuted because of your namesake. Father, we lift them up to you today. We pray for them, Lord, that today they will feel your presence, Lord, that the, today they will know that you have not forgotten them, Lord. I pray that you will answer their prayers, Lord, that you will send angels, Lord, to minister to them, Father. And, Lord, we know that there will be some that are giving their lives for you. We pray especially for them, Father, that they will feel your presence at the moment, Lord, that, they, that the heavens will be open as it was for Stephen, Lord, that they will see you. And thank you, Father, Lord. I pray that your church, Lord, will be strong and the gates of hell won't prevail against her, Lord. Father, we need you desperately, Lord, to empower us, Lord, to be, to be the people you want us to be. Everything, Lord, that doesn't make sense to the world, Lord, it is from your kingdom and help us then live that kind of life. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Gracious God, we're here again. We showed up. We came to church. We're online. We're here in person. We're sitting in these seats and we're wondering again, what are you doing, Lord? What are you doing? What do you want to do in us? What do you want to do in me? Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to come again and do that thing that only you can do. We pray with open hearts and childlike trust. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Spirit of God. Come, bring the living bread and speak to us afresh this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So I'm doing this series called The Upside Down Kingdom, and somehow I feel like today in particular on Super Bowl Sunday, it feels very much like an upside down kingdom. And I think, you know, in the first century, I can imagine Christians huddling up in these little house churches but the big thing going on was in the Coliseum. I mean, that was, that was where it was really happening. It wasn't at church, you know, it wasn't at, in home. But here we are again, and we're determined to follow this person, this, this Jesus, Son of God, and hear what he has to say about the kingdom of God that continues to challenge us week after week as we think about the crazy things that he said, the way he challenged the accepted social order of his day, where he said that neediness is blessedness, where he said that enemies have to be loved, where big things come from small things, where we find life by losing it, and today in particular, where we're told that grown-ups are supposed to behave like children. So let's look at Mark chapter 10, and I want, to look, want us to look at verse 13. This is such a well-known passage. We've got stained glass that remind us of it. We have childhood memories of picture books that are probably one of the first things we learned. And, and I do a chapel time with our kids in the preschool. And of course, this is one of the stories that are, is most beloved. We all know it practically by heart, but let's read it again. Let's hear it because it's such a powerful and important word. There's a reason why we remember it so well. Let's read it aloud. People were bringing children to him in order that Jesus might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms he laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. Isn't that kind of, I don't know about you, but that's my favorite part. He took them up in his arms, he laid his hands on them, the good touch, and, and he blessed them. I just treasure that picture. I want to believe that God is like that, don't you? I want to believe that, and I do. In the disciples' minds, though, Children were really a second priority, and I think it's important to remember that Mark makes it very clear that Jesus is on his way to the cross at this point. He's, his face is, is set toward Jerusalem. He is going to Jerusalem, and he's expecting bad things to happen, and he tells his disciples the same. And yes, he will rise again on the third day, but something really bad is going to happen, and and of course, his disciples didn't understand it, and they, in, in many ways, objected to what was happening. But on the way to Jerusalem, this happens. He stops. These, these mothers and fathers are bringing their children to him. Jesus seems to have time for these children. The disciples disagree. You know, come on, Jesus. Look at all that's going on here, and you have time for this. This is a secondary priority and it's not worth your while. And when the disciples try to push these parents and their children away, Mark in particular, the other disciples don't, the other gospels don't mention this, but Mark, which is probably the first gospel, says Jesus was indignant, and that's a nice way of saying he was really ticked off. Jesus was angry that they were trying to push these children and their parents away from him. And so he says, let the little children come to me, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And so in one sentence, Jesus turns upside down a world where children were really socially, social nobodies, 
And let's face it, where a, an infant could be abandoned simply for being disabled or for being a girl, or if its, if its parents were very poor. And having two daughters, boy, that's especially painful to think about that as a reality. In many ways, we are still living out of that pain. But what did Jesus mean, and what can we learn from the way Jesus looked at children and the way Jesus wants us to see the kingdom of God? Let's think about a couple of things. The first is when we come to Jesus like a child, I think we come trusting. We come trusting Lee. And I've got some images here from a, a TV series called The Chosen. How many of you have seen The Chosen? Have you seen any episodes from that? Actually, I think it's pretty good. I'm hoping to show you just a little piece of that in a, in a moment. But this is from a scene that basically is fo focusing on Jesus' relationship with these, in, these children in particular. And I, I love the picture of these parents who, Mark says, were bringing their children to Jesus to bless them. Obviously, they judged Jesus to be worthy or to be worthy of trust. You know, if you're a parent and you have children, the first time you've placed that child in the arms of someone else, not yourself or your spouse. That's a big deal. I remember bringing our kids to this preschool and getting choked up just doing that, taking that little step. It's big as a parent when you hand your child over to someone else. Children learn who to trust from their parents. They get an idea of what it, uh, the character of someone who can be trusted. And children also learn from their friends, but especially from their parents. But there comes a time when the decision to trust and who to trust has to become our own, right? As we grow, we also begin to, we have to formulate our own radar and our sense of who can be trusted. There comes a time when we get to choose who we are going to listen to. I heard someone say that the greatest compliment ever paid to him was when a little child came up, total stranger, and asked him if he would tie his shoelaces. And that is truly an honor, I think, the trust of a little child. And so I want to ask you, who do you, who do you trust to tie your shoelaces? We all need people in our lives that will stand beside us, like two teammates in the Super Bowl. Is it uh, Philadelphia or is it Kansas City today? Yeah. Trust. Trust is the binding for the deepest love. I love this one psychologist that I read said, trust is the binding for the deepest love, the strongest friendships in the world's communities. Society is built on trust, and in the absence of trust, Listen to this, fear rules. In the absence of trust, fear rules. We can't do it on our own. We're born, you and I are born by the grace of God, hopefully, because of trust. We were born into trust. We were born to trust. We need each other. But sometimes we feel we can't trust, right? Sometimes our trust is broken because of betrayal or rejection or abuse. And you may feel, I can never let my guard down again. If I trust, I'm only going to get hurt again. I've experienced that. You've experienced that. If you've circled the sun enough times, we've all experienced broken trust. I can say I've never regretted placing my trust in Jesus, in the Lord. I found him to be trustworthy, his words, his way. Lou Smeads says something profound, though, about the body of Christ, where even in the body of Christ, we can lose our trust. He talks about the church as a place where we learn to trust, to forgive, to forbear, to renew commitments when we can, when to walk away in peace 
and hopefully where we learn to get a sense of humor. Jesus asks us to trust him like a child would trust, to trust him completely as the one who loves us and will never abandon us. And so he puts it to us. We get to choose who we're going to trust. We all need mentors, teachers, trailblazers. And Yeshua, Jesus, asks us to trust in him like a little child. And then when we come to Jesus like a child, we come with curiosity. I love that Jesus doesn't say, hey, don't stop the parents from coming to me with their children, but he says, hey, let those kids come to me and don't hinder them. As if, yeah, the parents had to say so, but obviously there were some children that just wanted to come. Let the children come. Because those children were curious about Jesus. They wanted to come to him. It wasn't just the parents. They came because they were fascinated by Jesus. They were curious about him. And in the TV series, The Chosen, uh, there's a beautiful scene where that curiosity is played out. Let's see if we can show it to you. If we can't, that's all right, too. All right. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gives forth bread from his earth. And I pray that if there are ever two children who come visit my home here, that you will give them the courage Stay. to say shalom, no. so that they will know they do not have to remain in hiding. He's a good man. Stay. Amen. We need to go. Stay. We are going to stay. Ah! That sound I hear. <laughs> Sheep don't sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's definitely not sheep. Maybe a rooster? <laughs> Greetings, children. You know, it is not safe for a child to wander from their home. You never know if there are bad men around. You are wise to bring your friend this time. Joshua. Shalom, Joshua. I admire your bravery to come here. You are a good friend. Well, don't worry. I'm not a bad man. See, I know it. You are free to stay for a bit. I still don't understand. What is your reason for being here? I'm telling you this. Because even though you are children, and the elders in your life have lived longer, many times, adults need the faith of children. And if you hold on to this faith really tightly, someday soon, you will understand all of what I am saying to you. But you ask an important question, Abigail. What is my reason for being here? And the answer is for all of you. Good stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's real easy for me to believe that Jesus had a sense of humor. I mean, look at the disciples. <laughs> look at us. I know he had a sense of humor. And like Abigail, that little girl, who actually is the one who leads all of her friends to Jesus, we like to ask why, children love to ask why, they are curious endlessly fascinated, and that's an attitude that Jesus says we need as we come into the kingdom of God. You know, can you remember watching ants crawling along a sidewalk when you were a little child, or a leaf floating down the street on a rainy day, or just being in awe of a billion lights shimmering up in the sky? And yes, asking about God, and what happens when you die? Big questions that we have when we're children. And sadly, we grown-ups can lose our sense of wonder. We can refuse to be surprised. And we can choose to be bored with life. 
but curiosity and wonder can be ignited again as we slow down and really attend to the world and the people around us as we as we look for displays of, of genius all around us, of God's creativity in other people, in the beauty of nature, and asking a neighbor what brings them joy, or reintroducing ourselves to a familiar place through the eyes of a child. Have you ever done that? Something becomes brand new as you walk with a child into a very familiar place. When we come into a sacred space like this, it's often because a flame was, was lit within us, a flame of curiosity, of wonder, of awe, that the Lord draws us to himself with that childlike sense of awe and with all the questions that we come with. Why? What is my purpose? Why am I here? What do I do with this anger? What do I do with this frustration in my life? How do I deal with these dark feelings, the sadness, the grief? God, can you meet me here in this place? Can you tie my shoelaces? When we come to Jesus like a child, we also come ready to receive. Small children are completely dependent on other folks, and our hearts break when we see children who are desperately in need when they're malnourished, when they're lacking the basic necessities of food and water and clothing to say nothing of love. And when I think of, let's, let's just ponder what's happening in Turkey, Syria right now, I think what just truly breaks our hearts is when we see little children and we know that children are suffering or when they're alone and frightened and scared. And I still have, I can't get this picture out of my mind of an infant with its umbilical cord still intact, being drawn out of the rubble. Um, the mother, very sadly, had died in the earthquake. But amazing, amazing that these rescue workers were able to hold up this child and take this child to safety. At a time like this, when we see the response of uh, national governments right now and relief agencies like UNICEF and quite frankly Presbyterian Disaster Assistance does a really excellent job of connecting with partners on the ground in that part of the world. We're reminded of how much we depend on and how much we receive, that's what I'm talking about right now, from other people. Life is so dependent upon grace. It's so dependent upon receiving and a child reminds us of that a child's dependency, a child's need to receive love and care and protection. And Jesus says we need to come ready to receive from him the gift of grace. When Jesus says that the kingdom of God must be received like a child, it means it must be received as a gift. It can't be bought, it's not for sale. Children experience life as a gift, it's something which they can only receive and give thanks for. And Jesus says we need to come in that same spirit of openness, ready to receive the miracle of God's love and care, something that we cannot earn. The hug comes for free. When we care for little children, it's not because they've earned our affection and attention that we provide for them, it's because we love them. The hug comes for free. And in the same way Jesus teaches us to see God as a, as a loving father or a loving mother, a loving parent who loves us and cares for us and invites us to receive his affection, God's affection and love as a gift that we cannot earn. And finally, as we come to Jesus like a child, vulnerable people become our priority. Vulnerable people become our priority. It's little people, not great people, who Jesus directs our attention to in this life. For whoever welcomes me, Jesus says, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And as you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to who? You did it to me. A guy I wrote with, felt strangely attracted to disabled children 
as a young man, as a teenager. And he began to volunteer his time at Jewish summer camps every year. He loved disabled children. And when he and his wife could not have children and they adopted, they had no idea that the child that they adopted would be disabled, a disabled child. And they've spent their lives ensuring that he is loved and provided for. And we have several families in our church who in various ways have made sure that their children, special needs or disabled children, have been loved, provided for, cared for, that their needs have been met. And I want to say God bless our special needs teachers here at St. John's. We have two at least. We probably have more. And when Jesus tells us that we can't enter the kingdom of God except as little children, he honors the least of these among us, and he reminds us that he was that poor child born in a humble manger, that his kingdom cause is not the great and the powerful, but it's the lowly and the vulnerable. And when you've done it to the least of these, Jesus said, you've done it to me. When you rescue a child from the rubble, when you feed the hungry, when you support a child in a distant land, when you care for the helpless, it's as if you were doing it to me, Jesus said. It's as if you were doing it to me. C.S. Lewis, uh, who offered, authored several children's books, once paraphrased the words of the Apostle Paul, he said, When I became a man, I put away childish things, including the fear of childishness and the desire to be very grown up. God, help us to be children as we pray right now. God, thank you that your kingdom is a place that children would love. You ask us to have the simple faith of little children. For many of us, Trust is difficult, and we've been hurt in the past. Lord, help us, for we need and desire your blessing and your wisdom and your example and your power and your grace. And we come asking you to supply not everything we want, but everything we truly need, and to help us to care for the most vulnerable among us as you do, to see in children and in those that others might ignore your very presence. And so as we come to you right now in prayer and in the power of the Spirit, please renew our youth like the eagle and transform our hearts into the heart of heaven's child, into your heart, Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment. Let's stand right now as God's children, God's people, and let's sing this final hymn, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. It's number 318 in our hymnal, and the words are above us on the screen. Let's sing together. Come thou font of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy.
going to invite Taylor and, and uh, Alexa to come back. We're just going to play uh, at the end of the service briefly, but I want to share just a few things that I want you to be aware of before you exit the service today. I know you're looking forward for the Super Bowl. It doesn't start till three, so sit down. <laughs> Got a couple things to share, though, before you leave. First of all, do we have the slides? I want you to pray with me, obviously, for the people of Turkey and Syria, and I want to, as we were talking about that today, I do want to encourage you to give to Presbyterian Disaster Assistance. That's no joke. That is a major way to serve and to connect with partners on the ground uh, in Syria. They have a major connection with the local church in the Middle East and in Asia Minor and in Turkey. All those areas are well served as you give to PDA, and that's one way that you can do that. Also, I want to ask you to pray for your leaders. This Saturday, we are having a leader retreat at Sarah Retreat in Malibu. And uh, we really encourage you to pray for us as we're seeking God's direction for this coming year. Please keep that in your prayers. Next Sunday, we're welcoming Dr. Gerald C. Rivers, often affectionately known as the voice of Dr. Martin Luther King. He came and shared last last year in February, and we're really looking forward to having him come again. I know he's going to be very inspiring. I will be here, but not preaching, and really thankful for Dr. Rivers and uh, the Peace Player Drummers, which are going to bring some awesome music, 12 young people playing those awesome drums, and it's going to be a very special Sunday, and I hope you'll be here, whether you're online or in person, get to church. Also, I want to remind you, we are starting an old, new tradition. I know you've never heard the word potluck in church before, but we are having a soup and salad potluck on the first Sunday of every month. We want to encourage you folks, quite frankly, to get to church. And uh, at least once a month, we want to make that a goal. So please join us next uh, on March the 5th for a really special uh, lunch together. Finally, a couple more things. You can continue to sign up for a small group experience as we continue to study the Upside Down Kingdom and uh, a series I'm going to be doing on great women of the Bible called Herstory, and <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Thursday, Alpha returns, and George wants me to remind you again that we will be there. We'd love to have you join us for that practical introduction to the Christian faith. And please know we do love and appreciate all the ways that you serve, all the ways that you give, all the ways that you support the ministry and the work of Christ through this church. So God bless you as you do that, whether it's with an usher or whether it's online. We love you and we're grateful to be the body of Christ together. And now may the living Christ go with you. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you in obedient ministry above you to watch over you, within you to give you power, and before you to show the way. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Amen.